This is the Emergency Medical Minute, sponsored by Mile High Ambulance. We had a patient come in last night who had like a very severe alcohol withdrawal, like literally a life-threatening form of it, was getting like very high doses of phenobarbital, had like marked like autonomic instability, ultimately was intubated and admitted to our facility. And I was just going to talk about something I think is really interesting relating to alcohol withdrawal and delirium tremens in particular. If you guys are familiar with it, alcohol is binding to the GABA receptor. GABA is uh, inhibitory and after enough alcohol, over time, right? You kind of deplete your own endogenous GABA and GABA is inhibitory, glutamate is um, excitatory, and there's this kind of balance of those two, and that's kind of what's happening on the molecular level. And so when you remove the GABA stimulation, you remove that break, then it's all glutamate activation, and you can get seizures and things like that. And that's kind of the etiology of like what's happening in uh, severe alcohol withdrawal. But what's really interesting with DTs, delirium tremens, is that, that that is still what's happening on that molecular like receptor level, but it's actually a disorder that happens because of a sleep disruption. Alcohol, it does activate GABA, but what it also does is it suppresses REM. You have to imagine like a patient who's been drinking, you know, like like a fifth a day of liquor, like every day, you know, for years is just chronically suppressing REM sleep. And so that's the stage of sleep when you're dreaming. And so after years of suppressing dream sleep, you remove that. They don't have that suppression anymore. The brain is like so hungry for dream sleep that it spills over into the wakeful state. So they're like like dreaming when they're awake. It's really kind of crazy, right? And so that to me is also very distinctly different from alcohol hallucinosis, where someone like sees something like in the room or a, a small figure or something crawling on them or something like that. That is different than being in a dream, right? So you could kind of tease out what the patient's going through. Is this alcohol hallucinosis or is this delirium tremens based on how they're looking. Is it total clouding of the sensorium, like they're in a dream? That's probably DTs. If it's just like a discrete object or something in the room, that's probably alcohol hallucinosis, which is not as concerning. So anyway, I think that's like a really interesting like kind of way to think about it and is just a, kind of a cool fact about alcohol withdrawal. We had an alcohol or delirium tremens on Wednesday, didn't we? Yeah, room seizure, seven, seizure yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so and he was like just in that like kind of fog looking around. Yeah, it's yeah. a, it's pretty it's pretty legit when you see it, and it's also something that happens later in the alcohol course. You know, it's like you have to be several almost like days into the withdrawal period. It's usually not something that's going to happen within a couple hours. So that time I can also help differentiate it for you. So by the way, kind of a little fun fact. Can you, can you talk with someone? Yeah, they they can, but they're going to be like very out of it. Okay. You know, like but they can they can be verbal for sure. No, you just have to like be really aggressive with uh, phenobarbital. You know, historically we've done lots of benzos because that also activates the GABA receptor. But we found that benzos have kind of this paradoxical reaction. They can cause agitation. They're harder to to get like a dose response curve to them. Like it's really difficult to titrate them. While phenobarbital is very predictable pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics, um, it is titratable, and you don't have these paradoxical reactions. And so there's been a big push to go towards phenobarbital monotherapy and those patients do much better on it so if they are still dysautonomic and doing poorly just give them more phenobarbital like they're just so GABA depleted that they just need more to get back to baseline so it just suggests they just need more all right well great great good talk guys um uh, let's have a good shift we'd like to thank our sponsor health one continental division and swedish medical center for their financial contributions to the emm Donations from them and listeners like you make it possible for us to fulfill our mission of producing and spreading free medical education to the masses. If you enjoy our show, please consider making a one-time or reoccurring donation to help cover our operational costs and keep the EMM awesome. Click on the link in our show notes to make a donation. Thank you for listening.